This fresh coat of the startup life has been sprayed on nice and smooth by Wagner and the Flexil series of paint sprayers. Startup Nation, my wife decided she wanted to rehab her childhood home. The goal was to fix it up and invite a nice family to rent it out. We knew one of the biggest jobs we had to undertake was painting. However, from the walls, the cabinets, and even the siding outside, it was going to be a big task. As entrepreneurs with a company to run, we knew this was going to take up a lot of our time, which is why we decided to get a paint sprayer. And after much research, we decided to go with the sprayer from the Flexio series from Wagner. Startup Nation, these sprayers are top-notch because of its flexibility to paint or stain walls, furniture, cabinets, and more. It's 10 times faster than using a paintbrush, which was a big selling point for us. And you can paint or stain right from the can. It's also easy to clean in five minutes and being great for indoor and outdoor projects, a paint sprayer from the Flexio series clearly needs to be part of the arsenal in your garage. So if you're ready to stain your deck or like me, feel your daughter's request of a bubblegum pink room, up your game with a paint sprayer from the Flexio series by Wagner. Take it from me. Your time will thank you. It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is the Startup Life, the show for entrepreneurs and career minded professionals. You know, Startup Nation, as we pursue our dreams and whatever that looks like, we all want to pursue what makes us happy, but we also want to make sure what makes us happy also has meaning and which is why we have a great guest to help us out with what that would look like she is a speaker author and founder of the pajama program her work has been featured on the oprah winfrey show the today show forbes cnn and the wall street journal she is also the author of purpose passion and pajamas how to transform your life embrace the human connection and lead with meaning she is genevieve paturo genevieve how are you ma'am I'm fine. Thank you for having me, Dominic. Uh, no worries. Are you ready to pour some knowledge in the Startup Nation? Because we can definitely use your help and your insight with that today. I'm ready. All right. Sounds good. So if you would, just kind of share your origin story and your background. And how, do you, how did you come to, fi- uh, to found the Pajama Program? You know, Dominic, I was climbing the corporate ladder because I always wanted to be a successful woman, um, you know, just living in a great city with great opportunities. And right. I was in New York and that corporate ladder was it to me. Absolutely. And I was I was doing it. I was climbing and I'm working 24 seven. I'm sure lots of people can relate. And one day, literally 12 years in, mm. I still thought it was, you know, my goal to get to the 40th floor. I heard a voice in me. And I know now it's my heart voice that was speaking to me, not my head voice. Gotcha. And it, yeah, it asked me this question. It asked me if this is the next 30 years of your life, is this enough? Hmm. And that stopped me cold. I was single. I was alone, never been married, didn't have children. And I realized literally in, in seconds, oh my goodness, I've missed something. And soon after, I realized, you know, I, w- I was just going to be alone for my forever. And I missed having children in my life. I had nieces and nephews, godsons that I adored, but I didn't have my own family. Right. And so I thought, how am I going to bring children, more children into my life? And I started reading in shelters at night after work. Mm-hmm. And I would read and, you know, I didn't know details about what had happened to these kids, but clearly they were traumatized and, you know, and, and hurt by people who were supposed to be taking care of them. And here they were in safety in shelters and sleeping in their clothes, I saw after I read to them, and it broke my heart. I started bringing pajamas, mm-hmm. and when I handed them out the first time, there was a little girl who refused. She was so afraid to take anything from me, and finally, in the end, she whispered to me when she was just there, and it was just me. The other kids had gone into that room to sleep. She whispered, what are pajamas? What are they? Wow. And that just that just really, really hurt me. And I couldn't believe I was so unaware of this whole world. And I just got obsessed. I was obsessed and I put everything else, you know, to the side. And all I could think about was every place I could get to and all the pajamas I could beg, borrow or steal for these kids. Right. 
Right. No, thank you for sharing that. It's funny you mentioned that because it wasn't until I, I got married to my wife, the, you know, the importance of pajamas. I remember when we uh, had our daughter, uh, she's like, you know, she has to have pajamas. She has to have pajamas. And I was like, uh, she can just sleep in whatever, like something that's just comfortable. She's like, no, having pajamas, it, it has a meaning. Like it means that like you're in a place where you're love and there's comfort and stuff. Like yes, that. So yes. I, I didn't, I didn't even think about that. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you uh, today. Cause I, I just found that fascinating, but I appreciate you sharing that and your insight. I didn't realize either until mm-hmm. I saw the way they were sleeping in their clothes that night, right. that I had flashbacks of my mom putting us to bed and all of what you said is exactly true. It's not about the material. It's about right. the love and the safety and the comfort and the security my mom gave us. Right. For sure. For sure. Like I said, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that uh, as well, for sure. But, you know, you, you talked about, you know, being in corporate America for, for 12 years and, you know, this thing that just kind of kept, you know, you know kind of, you know, pushing you to kind of do this thing or whatever. Kind of talk about that push pull and when you ultimately decided to kind of like, you know, what, I'm going to do this. It was a lot of push pull. I mean, my head was fighting right. because it wanted to stay on track. It said, "You worked this hard." You know, it was the it was the the old me, the the me that was hell bent on right. climbing that ladder, and it wouldn't let my heart lead. You know, it kept giving me all the excuses and all the reasons why I couldn't make it. I couldn't do it. I didn't know enough about it. What did I really think pajamas were going to do for these children? And it, it was just this real battle between my head and my heart. But, you know, I, I speak a lot and I, and I do consulting and all of that. And in my right. book, I, at every chapter, I have lessons learned so other people can learn from my mistakes. And I, I say, you follow your heart every day and you tell it it's the leader, your brain will fall into place. Your brain will then start to follow your heart once it realizes, hey, I'm losing. (laughs) I might as well just help. And it does. It makes a switch. For sure. For sure. Startup Nation, for sure. Uh, And and if you want to purchase the book, Startup Nation, once again, that book is Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you're listening to uh, the replay on the podcast. I want to ask you about the book now because I was interested about uh, chapter six, uh, which is, give me a second, When the World uh, Fell Apart. Kind of, You kind of talk about your experience with 9-11. Kind of talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. Well, uh, as anyone in the entire world could imagine right. being New York was frightening. Mm-hmm. And um, I was in Manhattan that morning and everything stopped. The world stopped and we literally didn't know if another bomb would go off, right. you know, anywhere. And people were yelling, you know, leave the city walk. And, you know, on the news, as I saw that night and keep seeing they, they have, pictures of people walking on the west side highway they closed it to cars and i was one of those people walking out of the city on the west side highway and we didn't know for a very long time what was going to be in the world and certainly in new york city and prior to that a woman from a national magazine parenting magazine called to do a like literally a paragraph story on pajama program and what I was doing. Right. And I thought that was really nice. And she actually called after nine 11 to say, we've stopped publishing. Mm. We don't know when we're going to publish again. We'll let you know. And I mean, that was the last thing on my mind and everyone's mind right. when, you know, but I was really surprised and I thought that was really nice of her to to call everybody that, that was, you know, hoping to get their lives on track with this article. Mm-hmm. But she did call over a year later mm. when they started publishing and she told me when the article was going to be published and it was going to be in the December slash January Christmas issue the next year. And all of us in New York we're still, we're we're so in love with each other because we had been through this and life was still not steady for us. And it was an incredible, um, incredible day when I came home, not, not remembering the article and having thousands of boxes show up at my door of my apartment Mm. because the magazine had, had already gone to the subscribers that issue and people wanted to help. And that help was just 
what people wanted to do. And, and I'm sure it was around the country still. And it was around the world. You know, people just wanted to help each other. And those people saw this little article, thought of these children I described, and sent pajamas and books and money and cash and letters. And that was an amazing result of the love that we feel for each other in times of crisis. For sure. For sure. And, and I want to ask you that, you know, about that particular time, because I mean, even with now, you know, with if everything going on, people are looking for ways to help. People are looking for ways to contribute, uh, if you will. And it, it's just funny that like it, sometimes in moments like these, like your ultimate true superpower kind of comes out and you decide to start a nonprofit or a business or you pursue that thing that you've been you know, thinking about pursuing. Kind of talk about that uh, for the, the listeners, if you would, Genevieve, about like, you know, sometimes like the world is kind of waiting on you to kind of pursue your dream or whatever that may be. Right. But, you know, we all have a superpower, right, mm -hmm. Dominic? Right. We all do. But what happens is we are afraid to take a chance right. because we're so we're so um, brainwashed to thinking other people know better. If there's this, if the, ever, everybody is falling into place in one of these established careers, then there, it must be good. And why would I try something that's untried that I think I can do? when there's no proof that I can do it and everybody else has fallen into place, I should just fall into place. And it's, it's sad because I was one of those people too. But if we all realized that if we follow our heart voice, there's a path with our name on it and it is different, but the beautiful part is we respect that in each other right. and we rally for each other. And the more people who say, I'm going to follow my heart, the more inspired other people are to say, hey, I can do it. I know that person. And I'm the first one, Dominic, to say to somebody, if I could do this knowing nothing, you can. Let me let me help you. Let me tell you shortcuts. Let me be there. Let me be your cheerleader because we need to be cheerleaders for each other. Right. And, and you know what, Genevieve, you, you bring up an interesting point. In Startup Nation, we, we have people – who come on the show and, and they share this very same sentiment. It's like, look, when I started this thing, I didn't, there was a lot I didn't know. Right. And, and it just goes yeah. to show that, you know, a, a lot of the stuff that you do need to do, you do need to know. You won't possibly know unless you start, you won't know you need to know it unless uh, you start. So I appreciate you sharing that. And we don't, feel comfortable saying we don't know That's and we don't too. feel comfortable yeah. asking people because we feel dumb mm. as I did. But the more, the more I asked, can you help me? Can you tell me people didn't laugh? You know, if they did, there were one or two, there's always going to be, there are always going to be naysayers and you just have to get over that and get your cheerleading squad in place so that they, you know, pick you right back up. But the more I ask questions, the more I find now people aren't afraid to ask me what they think might be a dumb question or they're embarrassed. And I'm so grateful that I can pass it on. And I'm sure everyone feels that way, that give back. You know, it's our turn. It's the pay it forward philosophy. And it's just it's a lot easier than we, you know, than we think at the beginning. It's a lot easier to ask. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. Once again, Startup Nation, we're talking to Genevieve Fatoro, the, the founder of the Pajama Program. And if you want to get involved and help and, and donate some cash or some pajamas or wherever the case may be, go to pajama pajamaprogram.org. We have that link there in the show notes for easy access if you're listening to the replay on the podcast. Now you, you talked about being featured uh, in an article and stuff like that, but you also got a, a, a huge pop when you talk to a, a certain media magnet or a certain media mogul. Uh, if you will talk about your experience when you went on the Oprah Winfrey show. Oh my gosh, that is a game. Just a life changer. Right. It's, there's never going to be another Oprah. There are wonderful people, but um, you know, she's an example of somebody who followed her heart, right. moves mountains and moves people. Mm -hmm. And I got a call from a producer on the show who asked me the funniest question in the world. Hi, this is so-and-so from the Oprah Winfrey show. Do you have a few minutes? And I, you know, I remember laughing to myself saying, I have 
hours and days and weeks and months <laughs> <laughs> to talk to you. Absolutely. I think I have a couple of minutes, you know, <laughs> and it was, I didn't tell anyone they called and they called for two weeks straight, every couple of days, more questions and, you know, trying to get some more information to make a decision if they were going to invite me on the show. So I was, I, you know, I firmly believe sacred is secret. Mm. And I didn't tell anyone until two weeks in when she said, okay, we're ready to book you. But it was an unbelievably uh, surreal experience from the first call to all the calls that came after in the in the questions. And then I'm not going to spoil it for any of your listeners who can see the show either on my website, GenevievePatero.com mm -hmm. or YouTube. And you'll see the reveal. There was such a surprise that um, even Oprah, you can tell, is shocked right. when it's a reveal. And, and the show did really well with the audience. They aired it three times over two years. And you'll see why if you see the show it's such a, an amazing reveal absolutely all right startup nation so we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break we gotta pay some bills once again my name is dominic lawson and you're listening to the startup life Tresta powers this episode of The Startup Life. Okay, Startup Nation, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Tresta. Tresta is an app for iPhone and Android that lets you do business calling and texting from anywhere. I know so many entrepreneurs that are still using their, their personal phone number for business calls. It can get complicated drawing the line between your personal and professional life. Startup Nation, this is the best business phone app out there. Whether you just need a business phone number or if your team is ready for a complete business phone system, Tresta is totally flexible and can grow with your business. And it's all unlimited. Calling, texting, and all of the powerful call management features like auto attendance, call recording, user groups, and more for just $15 per user per month. With Tresta, there's no contract and you don't need any special hardware, just your smartphone you're already using. Tresta is easy to configure so you can set everything up yourself, all online, avoiding all the hassle and high overhead costs of setting up a traditional business phone system, which is important because as entrepreneurs, we are always trying to cut cost and time. They're often a 30-day free trial so you can see if Tresta's virtual phone system is right for you. Communicate smarter and more efficiently with Tresta. Start now at Tresta.com forward slash Startup Life. That's T-R-E-S-T-A dot com forward slash Startup Life. The link is there in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. Tresta, business communication simplified. All right, Startup Nation, welcome back as we continue our conversation with today's guest here on The Startup Life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I've actually watched it uh, on Genevieve Patero, uh, com. We have that link there in the show notes as well. Also sign up for the newsletter uh, Startup Nation. Definitely some uh, content you want to put in your entrepreneurial uh, toolkit uh, for sure. Now, Genevieve, when you're talking to people and you're consulting and you're trying to help them, you know, reach their goals or pursue whatever it is uh, that they're pursuing. And you like like you said, you know, you have that that push pull mentality. How are you coaching uh, those people up? How do you do that for them and, and get them to where they want to ultimately be? Well, this is um, a strange time for, mm. for all of us, of course, you know, of course. and it's everyone's priority to put food on the table right? and as it should be. So I talk about you make a jump like I did, or you, make a slide, slide something into your life. And this time is different for everyone. Some people are saying, this is the time. I have nothing to lose. I'm going for it. And they'll make that change. And some people are nervous or need to find a job because they lost a job. And I tell both of them, this is a time to give yourself a gift, whether it's the time to say, okay, I'm taking the big jump, or it's a time to say, you know, that idea I've always had to teach guitar mm. or to, you know, to um, be, uh, you know, be a teacher of right. art right. instead of keeping it on that back burner and maybe even pushing it further back, bring it into your life for even an hour now, because you, we all need to give ourselves a gift of the reminder 
our purpose isn't lost forever. Mm. Our purpose is going to need to find its way to the front. But if you push it back because of what we're going through, it's it's more sadness because you'll register that you you're pushing it further back. But if you bring that into your life, then it's a gift to say, this is real. I'm not giving up on this. And that and that time you're spending an hour a week researching it, talking to somebody in the business, actually spending an hour, maybe volunteering to play guitar for someone or on Zoom give some lessons for free to some people who might want to hear, you know, hear how how it, a lesson would go for them. It makes it it makes you feel hopeful. And it makes it makes not only your life better, but everybody in your life because you are really giving life to what you love to do, your purpose. So that's the first thing. Give yourself that gift. Don't push it farther away in this time. Right. Right. Thank you for, for sharing that. No, I, I, I appreciate that because, you know, there, there, there's just so, there's just so many things like people have all types of interests. They have all types of talents and skills and stuff like that. And I think a lot of times, you know, they want to pursue those things. And, and you talked earlier about your your cheerleading team. I think sometimes we're we're afraid to kind of share that with our cheerleading team because like, you, you you know and you know about this you know you went to school and you you had this career and it was great and wonderful and now you're going to give all that up for teaching guitar and and, right. and, 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 and and that can be quite detrimental especially if it's somebody that's close to you wouldn't you agree yes and i write about uh, somebody in in my book i write Absolutely. about somebody who you know pretty much laughed at my idea somebody right. was also climbing the corporate ladder and i i say the lesson there is get your cheerleading squad in place right. first find a few people who you trust who are going to be on your side because then when you start to tell other people you have a lot more backbone when somebody looks at you like why would you throw away a dozen years growing something you can just do it once in a while and really what's what are you changing in someone's life by giving them pajamas she said all those things to me and i and i didn't have that courage because i didn't have my cheerleading squad in place yet i did it the wrong way i did it the opposite way so get those people who support you in place and and go to them when you're in doubt, because they know, they know how great you are and they know you can do it more than, you know, sometimes for sure, for sure. And, and it just goes to show, and I appreciate you saying, it just goes to show to just basically double down on what you're saying. It, it just goes to show that, you know, great people will, will, will always kind of support you, especially when you put that cheerleading squad in place, they'll support you. I mean, they may not understand it all the time, but they'll definitely support you because they love you and they want to see you happy. And that's ultimately what you're trying to find, right? You're, you're trying to find the happiness and the meaning of, of, of what you do. And that's why I appreciate what you do and your book. And once again, Startup Nation, that book is Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas, How to Transform Your Life, Embrace the Human Connection, and Lead with Meaning. Let's talk about that lead with meaning part, just kind of in your own words. What does that even mean to lead with meaning? I think it's stepping outside of what you can do for you mm. and finding something bigger that changes someone that changes something that isn't right that makes something better and i think i found and i think a lot of us find that when we have a goal that makes things better for others or a group or changes something that everyone knows needs to be changed more people will come to support you more people want then you know want to also see that change, want to help that group, want to make a difference. And we're all searching. There's not one person who says, I don't really care. All I want to do is count my money. <laughs> you know, those people, those people are going to do that. And, you know, you just, you just have to wish them well. But most people want their life to mean something outside of themselves. And when they see something that they resonate with, you know, find find your group. It could be animals. It could be um, a disease. It could be children. It could be seniors. That group is your soul group. Those are the people that are you find each other because they want to change something that 
can be changed with support, with more people putting it, putting some solutions together. And it really is something that everybody deep down wants to be part of. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing. And it's not just nonprofit, right, Right, Dominic? It's everything. You can make a box. And if a box is going to be used to make something better, make, you know, bring supplies somewhere or any reason that a leader can show his team, his employees, that what they're doing is making a difference. Right. Then people want to be part of that. They want to know that there's a bigger reason for what they're doing than showing up and, you know, clocking in and clocking out. Absolutely. You know, that's why we have a Tom shoes. That's why we have, you know, all types of, you know, uh, those corporations where who they may be for profit, but they do serve a purpose and they do solve a problem uh, like right. you're talking about. So, no, I, I definitely uh, understand that for sure. I'm sorry, Genevieve, give me just a moment here. My computer is freezing up. My apologies. There we go. Okay. So Genevieve, you know, on your website, Genevieve once again, startup nation, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access. You also have master classes that you offer uh, for groups. Kind of talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, before COVID, I was speaking live right, right. and talking about the lessons I learned in the book and different leadership um, uh, tricks and, and things that are, are it, things that we take for granted, but make a leader, a good leader. Right. And then when COVID hit, people said, can you do these on Zoom? And I said, yeah, I'll, I can do them on, on Zoom, 45 minutes or an hour with Q&A and I'll, you know, call them master classes. So I, I took uh, over, over a dozen different titles and they're everything from following your heart voice to designing your vision board to how to lead with meaning to um, how to make a change and transform your own life to whatever it takes to move from a place where you feel your life has no meaning to a place where you feel you you have meaning you've brought meaning back into your life so there are different topics for individuals for groups for large groups small groups some related to nonprofits some related to um, any kind of entrepreneurial entrepreneurial endeavor but all about being a better leader not not only for yourself but for others for sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. Definitely want to find your pajamas, uh, startup nation for sure. Uh, I want to ask you this really quickly because like when, once we start pursuing that thing, that, that, that purpose, that thing that gives us, you know, that meaning, if you will, you know, sometimes it's not always easy, right? Like how do you combat those times? Because that's the, that's the times where it's like, it really gets a little hairy. Sometimes you would say Genevieve, it is not easy. Right. I mean, I had a lot of sleepless nights. Now I was raising money. That's always oh, an yeah. added, you know, a, an added challenge. But anytime you make a change, like I said, your head is going to give you every reason why you've made the wrong decision by leaving what you were doing, what you knew well. Mm-hmm. So you're you're constantly having to remind yourself and pick yourself back up and find the courage to feel the fear and do it anyway. And I have found that the universe is our partner. It's a partner to every single person, whether it is God, the universe, faith, spirituality. We're not alone in this existence. And every time I came up with came came to a brick wall, something showed up. Someone showed up Mm. and I even met. The man of my dreams who I married during this time of questioning because I wasn't on the right road. And when you are, you know, you can say it's miracle. You can say it's coincidence, whatever you want to say. But there are things that are gifted to you that that show up because you're open and you're you're literally asking the universe for help. You're asking people. You're asking invisible forces that you believe exist to help you. And they do. I believe, you know, I absolutely believe that it's almost like, you know, you start pursuing this thing and the university, the universe is watching 
And as you start to, you know, maybe the enthusiasm wanes a little bit or you get a little discouraged, they, like the universe just throws you a bone. It's like, you know, just a, just a little bit. To reminder. Keep, right. Just a little bit of reminder to kind of keep you going. So I can definitely uh, resonate with that. And Startup Nation can definitely uh, resonate with that uh, as well. Once again, Startup Nation, we're actually wrapping up with Genevieve, Genevieve Paturo, the author of Purpose, Passion, and pajamas. And once again, if you want to pick up a purchase, I mean, we want to purchase a copy of that book. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access. If you're listening to uh, the replay on the podcast, Genevieve, let me just ask you this big question. You know, once you, you know, you, you you've given out a million uh, sets of pajamas and, and everything's just going super well and you decide to kind of hang it up. What do you hope your legacy will be? What will people say about Genevieve once it's all said and done? Mm. Well, I, for for all for most of these twenty plus years, I've been founder, obviously, and executive director. But I wanted to write this book, so I asked our board of directors if we could hire an executive director, and I would leave that position, not take a salary anymore, gotcha. write the book, and consult and speak because I wanted people, I wanted more people to follow their heart to not only do good and make changes in this world, but also to feel good about waking up every day. Right. So. This is sort of my next chapter to help adults figure figure out what their uh, calling of their purpose is and how they can make a change and, you know, get through it um, because, you know, I can sort of tell them I know how scared you are. I know how um, worried you are. Let I'll be there for you. So I just I just hope people will know that there's there's more there's more in their heart than they give themselves credit for. There's more to them than their head voice, than what they've been taught and the traditional way to live a life. There's, there's the individual in buried in there that we've buried because we're afraid. And I just hope to inspire people to trust trust themselves and to listen and to ask themselves the hard questions like what do I really want to do and what will help me make a difference in this world I hear that I hear that and I think we're all in some way form of fashion are looking to try to pursue or figure out what that is that we can do uh, to make the world a better place or make or leave it the better than what we found it so I definitely appreciate all of that. And I just want to say once again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, you've, you've given amazing, you know, insight into, you know, finding your purpose and, and leading with meaning. And I appreciate that. And once again, Startup Nation, that book is pa- Purpose, Passion uh, and Pajamas. That link is there in the show notes to purchase that, uh, to put in your entrepreneurial toolkit for sure. But Genevieve, I'm actually going to turn the microphone over to you because look, with everything going on, we need some words of encouragement. Could you give that for us today if you don't mind? Sure, sure. Ask yourself, take some quiet time, five minutes, sit somewhere quietly and ask yourself, if this is the next 30 years of my life, is this enough? And and listen, and listen and jot down what you hear your heart voice saying, what's your answer? How do you want to spend the next 30 years? I hear that. I hear that. Thank you so much. And that's a big question. That's a big question that definitely holds our feet to the fire and holds us accountable. So I appreciate you sharing that. And that's going to wrap up Dominic, thank you. And thank you to everybody listening. And we are done. Thank you so much, Genevieve. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Dominic. Do you have any questions for me while you go? No, no. Just let me know when it's going to air and go live, and I will promote it. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts 
and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.